Hey everyone, welcome back to Maple Syrup Gaming. So today we're going to be doing a controller review and we're going to be looking at the PDP Rock Candy Controller. So the Rock Candy Controller is an officially licensed Nintendo product. And in my opinion, it's pretty much the cheapest controller you can get on the market. I got this one for only $12 on Amazon. However, its regular price fluctuates generally between $15 to $20. But if you keep an eye out for a sale, you can snag one away for as low as I got it. If you're interested in a budget option controller for your Nintendo Switch, especially like a second player controller, keep watching this review because I think that the PDP Rock Candy controller might be an option for you. So, without further ado, let's take a close up and take a look at what this controller is offering. First, let's take a look at the box. So, nothing fancy here, uh, just an identification of what the controller is. It's made by PDP and it's officially licensed by Nintendo. If we flip around the box, once again, there's really nothing special. And at the back, you can see that you have quite a variation of colors available for the Rock Candy controller. Now, uh, basically, let's move on and take a look at the controller itself. So in the box, here's what you're getting. You're basically getting the controller with the cable, because as I said earlier, this is a cabled controller. Uh, now, it's important to note that the cable is not USB Type-C, it is a micro USB controller. However, on the positive side, they did put the indentation here in the controller. What that means is that when the cable is plugged in, it is actually quite secure in there and you're not going to rip out the micro USB cable because it actually seats inside the controller, which protects it, which is always a good thing. I like when companies do this because micro USB is always more fragile than USB type C and this sort of remediates that problem without having the extra cost of the USB type C. Okay, so now with the cable out of the way, we can take a look at the controller. And the controller itself, the first thing I would be important to note is that it is very, very light. It is not a heavy controller in any way. Having the cable attached does help that a little bit, but overall, if you don't like a light controller, I have to let you know that this one is featherweight. The second thing to note is that this controller is very, very small. If we just for a second move it aside and compare it to the regular sized PDP controller, okay, when you grab it, your fingers are resting nicely on the shoulder buttons. So if you have, you know, man sized hands, this controller, unfortunately, when you grab it, you see how my finger is sort of over, you know, further up. It doesn't rest as comfortably if you have larger hands. However, for someone with small hands, especially a child, this is actually the controller that my six-year-old prefers because it's perfectly fitted to her hand size. Other than that though, the controller is pretty decent. The buttons are nice and, nice and clicky. Shoulder buttons are quite responsive. And the thumbsticks themselves are nice and I, I like them a little bit tight and these are nice and tight. They click well. The only thing is the D-pad is, you can see it's really cheaply made and it's not the best for uh, diagonals. Like this D-pad is suffering a little bit from the same thing that the Switch Lite D-pad is. It's that it's not raised off of the controller enough, making the diagonals actually a little bit awkward on it. But other than that, it's pretty decent. The last thing to note about this controller is that feature-wise, it is bare bones. It comes with no special features that some third-party controllers sometimes come with. So there's no turbo functionality. There are no uh, buttons at the back. So there's no programmable buttons on it. You're really getting just the bare bones functionality of a controller with all its buttons. It doesn't have rumble either. It does not have NFC compatibility. It does not have gyro control. And obviously being wired, well, it doesn't have a wireless compatibility. So now that we've had a decent overview of the controller, how did it score? Now, for any of you that are new to the channel, I do my scoring out of 55 and I have a regular methodology that I do for all of my controllers. I do have a specific video that explains exactly how I'd go through that process. And if you wanna watch it, it's up here for more information. But if not, you'll be getting most of the general points throughout the review. So the first category that we always look at for my controllers are the build quality and overall feel of the controller. And then this controller is going to be scoring a two out of five. Why is it scoring that low? For me, it's because of the size of the controller. 
But once again, like I said, if you have smaller hands, this could easily be a three out of five, but for my scoring system, I'll be giving it a two out of five. Just because for long gaming sessions, it being so small, the controller really doesn't feel super comfortable in my hand. And at the same time, the material that the controller is made out of, it feels sturdy. I'm not worried about it cracking or breaking the first time I drop the controller, but at the same time, it does feel a little bit cheaper than other third-party controllers. Even PDP's own controllers, the uh, enhanced controllers or the higher grade controllers, they feel you know, they feel a little more sturdy than this controller right here. And it's on the light side, which is something that I don't appreciate, but uh, it's not all bad. Like I said, if you have small hands, could be scoring higher for you. So the second category that we're gonna look at are the aesthetics of the controller and the features of the controller. Once again, this isn't gonna be a category where this controller is hitting high marks. It's going to get a three out of 10, simply because it has no special features as we mentioned earlier. So no rumble, no NFC, no gyro controls, it's wired. However, I don't duck at the second point for not being rechargeable. So it sort of gets like a bonus point. And I'm giving it a couple of extra points for the overall aesthetics because it's not a bad looking controller. And for a controller for this price, I find the look is very decent and the options of all the colors really allows you to personalize and find a controller that's in your favorite color scheme. So now we get to the most important scores overall, the gaming scores. And as usual, we start with FPS and third person action games. Now in this category, the controllers are going to be getting a solid 7 out of 10. It's not a great controller for these games, but it's a solid controller. Because overall, it has everything you need to play them, but unfortunately you won't be able to profit from sometimes those extra functionalities, like sometimes having some gyro controls or rumble functionality. And at the same time, it's not replacing it by adding any extra functionalities like sometimes these third-party controllers offer, like the macro buttons or the turbo functionality, which is why I can't score it either any higher than a 7. Now the second category is always 2D platformers and side scrollers. So basically in this category, the controller is going to be getting another solid 7 out of 10. As I said earlier, this isn't the best D-pad in the world, but it's also not the worst. And the diagonals not being that easy to input isn't so bad in these games because if you are inputting them, it's not in a circular motion, it's in a direct motion and this D-pad actually responds pretty well to that. At the same time, once again, I can't give it any higher than that because we're not getting any of those turbo functions, macro buttons or anything extra to help me, you know, recommend this controller strongly over the dog face controller that comes with the Switch. But at the same time, it's giving you a decent overall package. Now the third category we're going to look at are 2D fighting games. So we've got our Dragon Ball Fighter Z's, our Street Fighter games. Now if this is what you play a lot, this is probably not the controller you're going to want to look at. It's going to be getting a 6 out of 10. Unfortunately, it's a little bit under where I'd like it to be and that's because of those diagonals on that D-pad. The circular motions aren't that easy to input. You've got to really overstress the, the diagonal to make sure that it's registering. And unfortunately, that's why this controller is going to be getting lower in this category. And it's pretty much going to be the lowest category overall for this controller. However, if you're not really into the 2D fighters or if this isn't going to be your main controller for playing those games, it's not going to be too much of an issue for you. And finally, the last gaming category that we look at are our racing and kart games. So we've got our Mario Kart, our Crash Team Racing, and those type of games. And here again, the controller is just going to be getting a solid 7 out of 10. Why 7 out of 10? Well, because once again, no gyro functionality, no rumble. And these games sometimes, you know, really profit from those functions. So I really can't score it any more than just a decent 7 out of 10. But at the same time, if you offer me this or the dog faced controller, I would take this controller over the dog faced one. So overall, it's a decent offering, but it's not great in this category. So overall, this brings us to a score of 32 out of 55. Now you might be thinking to yourself, that's not the greatest of scores available. And you're right. 
but at $12, I really wasn't expecting this controller to really hit the highest marks ever. There'd be a problem if it was, especially that PDP makes more expensive controllers. So if this controller was outdoing its more expensive counterparts, it just wouldn't make sense. So that brings us back to the price. And that's really the sort of breaking factor in this review. It's that if this controller was more expensive, I could knock it for the score it got. But at 32 out of 55, which honestly, if you look at other controllers I reviewed, isn't that far off some more expensive controllers, I think it's actually a pretty decent offering. And as I said, if you are buying this for a child, or if you just have smaller hands, it actually wins quite a few points in that category. Because some people have trouble with the larger controllers. Like I said, like my youngest, my six-year-old, she really prefers playing with this because there are some games where she has trouble using the larger controllers. So overall, this controller is actually offering quite a bit for the $12. And at the same time, it's honestly better than a lot of the Chinese cheap knockoffs that you can get that are sometimes even more expensive than I got this controller for. So my conclusion in this case is a little mixed. It's actually a decent offering for the price, although it's not the greatest controller. So if you can't spend any more, let's say for a second player controller, don't feel bad about buying the PDP Rock Candy. But at the same time, if you have the money to spend and you can spend a little bit more on a wired controller, like an extra five bucks, there are serious better options out there like the PowerA Enhanced Controller, even the PDP Face-Off Controllers are much more solid offerings overall. So, as usual, I hope all you guys really liked this review. Let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. And please drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps the videos out a lot. And I'm trying to make a push to really hit that 2,000 subscribers. So all the support I can get from you guys will really, really help me along the way. And as usual, I hope I'll see you guys in my next video.